All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Rise of the Phoenix. My name is Dave, DLC Dave, and we are at the AFC Filed game. We are in late December. There's been a lot of games since you last with us, which was the 2-0 victory over Hereford. There's been a number of games and an even more number of goals. And because of the, the absolute sheer volume of goals, and the fact that it would take probably about a week to show you them all via highlights, I'm going to just... Uh, Show you probably the the big the big stories from the last few weeks. So take a look at this. So after that uh, Bolton game, we were went to visit Stortford and drew two two. This was a pretty remarkable game in that we missed a penalty, went two 0 up, missed a hatful of chances. They then scored a penalty, no problem, and then. They scored this. Now, I don't want to say that the game had decided I was going to draw this. But that's not happened before in the last five years or whatever it's been. And that's what happens in the 90th minute to make it 2-2. Yeah, but that happened. But, but before that, actually, I just realised I missed out, missed out a key one. A game I was worried about. A game I was very worried about. Going away to Bolton, who are still top of League One. We absolutely smashed them, people. We absolutely thundered through them. Six, we were three 0 up inside nine minutes, and that seems to be the pattern at the moment. The moment in, the, in, in this little spell we're on is that we are just scoring. Got so many goals early on. We, we just put teams away at half time. You know, we were well, I mean, again. We conceded three goals in the second half. So not not great, but we were what, four four nil up at half time. Five nil up after forty seven minutes. And then obviously, you know, they pulled it back a little bit when I actually did make some changes, I believe, around the 60th minute. And the 50th minute, I was pretty confident. I just took the players off and we just thought, well, the, the one thing come on can deal with it. And they weren't as good and we ended up conceding a couple. But I still, I, but I was obviously delighted to get through because I was worried that we would uh, fall at, at the first round this time. As you can see, we fortunately didn't and we went and beat uh, Chorley 6 1. Now, Chorley are in the same league as us, so it was a game we expect to win, but we still absolutely dominated. Let's see, apart from that 1-0, we've scored, and maybe the 2-2, we've scored absolute bucket loads in every single game. And that's, well, <laughs> a 10-0 win is, is uh, the crescendo, shall we say, of this little run against Eastley. Everything went in. Everything flew into the top corner. When it... So all the results that you, you just saw leaves us five points clear of file. We do have three games in hand on them but they did beat us earlier in the year i think we have had a few suspensions and postponements and things like that so we are still playing catch up in terms of number of games but obviously everyone else is playing catch up to us in terms of points you know plus 62 goal difference we seem to have just absolutely gone up another level in terms of goal scoring this year you know dan ryan's got 25 smith has got 13 philip's got 15 and then you've got threes, threes, fours, sevens from uh, Herbert. And, and the amount of assists that Paul Herbert chalks up is, is sublime, really. Um, and as you can also may, may have noticed, is that we are in December, which means we are getting a lot of interest in a lot of players. So far, we've been able to keep most of the players happy. It's only really George Dennison that's unhappy. He's wanted by 17 clubs. But I'm not particularly worried about him. He's here until 2022, but really, he's here until 2025. So good luck getting out of here, mate. Uh, Den Ryder has come to me saying he, he wants to leave, but we're able to sort of talk him around a little bit. But he's signing a deal anyway, so I'm, I'm not particularly worried about transfers this win this window. We are going to keep, keep keep all the players we want to. The only player that may actually go, which is maybe a surprise to you, is Paul Phillips. Yeah, he wanted to, he wanted to go. He came to me asking to go to, to Aberdeen. I guess he's Scottish, and it is a uh, you know we, we, they do play in the Scottish Premier Division. So, and it, obviously, I'm not saying it's not a step up. I'm just I'm used to teams around the Championship and the Premier League trying to steal their players, not Aberdeen. But to me, he hasn't actually developed that well. He's 20 years old now. He's technically, he's not particularly brilliant. And I do wonder whether we could have, if, you know, if we were, if we were definitely in the summer, if we, if we get a midfielder of decent quality, I think. I've got no issues of moving him on. Maybe the first one who I've voluntarily looked to move on. I mean, he's still performing very well, no doubt about it, but 
I I just wonder whether you know if we were, if we were playing Adam Elms up there, would be would he be even getting even even doing even better? I mean he's performing very well, but he's playing in a deeper role, just because he's technically much better. And he is improving as well. I mean, be, Newcastle must be delighted with what he's doing. But he's still got that still got that big potential according to my uh, my coaches. But yeah, it's it's just something that may happen in the future. I wanted to let you let you know out really. But yeah. I'll, all of our players have wanted. We're used to that, to be honest. It's not, it's not anything new for us. But we are now in no pressure to sell anybody. And hopefully, we won't. So we're going to go into the game. Okay, guys. So the team is Bradford in goal. Hutchins, Dennis and Johnson and Espinosa at the back. We have Peacock and Sinton in midfield. Hubert, Phillips and Nathan Smith in behind Dan Ryder. Pretty much our strongest first eleven. Uh, probably minus Adam Elms, who is suspended, of course. He's, he he doesn't know how to tackle, I think is the uh, the polite way of putting it. And, yeah, we, so Peacock comes in for him. And it's our strongest strongest team. It's uh, our our players, permanent players. Obviously, Adam Elms is on loan. Now, I'm looking at this filed team. And obviously, they are second. So, they're doing very well. They're playing a 4-3-3. That's not Jamie Ness, is it? But it is. It's Jamie Ness. Now... No one's going to know how I know that, but he used to play for Stoke, and wasn't very good. <laughs> he didn't. He did. He did actually play for Stoke, but he got injured immediately. He played in a in a in a uh, League Cup game against Swindon about four years ago. Well, more than that, six years ago. I'm very sad to know that. I know. So looking at it, I wonder who their main main man is. So key player Jacob Mellis. Did he, was he, did he used to play for Chelsea? I'm thinking. Yeah, he played for Chelsea. Well, Chelsea for, uh, you, you, as a youngster, he's a very good player for this level. I think he was actually a player that I was looking at for a midfielder spot, but I ended, I ended up going for somebody else, I think. Because he does look very, very good. But he went, he went to the high wage, which is not something I want to give to players that aren't already ours. So he's their key player. Do you wonder who their main man is in terms of... I'm sure team wise, not... These guys are in second? My rating rise are not particularly strong. I mean, 7.06 is a top average rating for a team. I think Oscar's only got 10 goals so far. I mean, Jamie, for some reason, I saw the Jamie in the sea. I thought it said Jamie Cureton. I can say, how is he still alive? He's... But uh, a little flashback to all the uh, little past FM god in the lower leagues. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, they beat us as well earlier in the season. So, clearly, they got something about them. But looking at their squad, it doesn't look particularly impressive, and the morale is not good. They're on a little bit of an iffy run, but they're still obviously a, a still obviously a big threat. And we've got, I think we we, we need to go there. We need to go out today and get revenge. To be honest, I I, I wasn't happy with losing the game, and I think we should go. I, I want to tell them to go out and get revenge. Yeah, we go. And the option would be there in the uh, the team talk. So here we go. Come on, boys, let's go, let's go out. Now, we have been, I'm going to say, we have been absolutely flying out the traps in recent weeks off camera. So I'm fully expecting a nil-nil. But uh, we do have a corner early doors. It's clear, that, as far as Espinosa, and there's a flicked header for Matthew Johnson. And we take the lead inside three minutes. I'm going to say it is not a surprise to me. And don't be surprised, to be honest, if we go ahead and rattle in two or three goals in the first 10, 15 minutes. Because we are on, we are on an absolute fire right now. Matthew Johnson getting a, a, a head to the uh, Gary Espinosa delivery. And we have another chance, I think, on six minutes. Dan Ryder has it. He is tackled by uh, Jamie Ness, Stoke legend. And they can clear it as far as it goes to Bojai. I'm going to say that. That's how you say that. And Ness has it again. He finds the bio. They've got a chance here then. They're going to cross it in. And there's Bojai. I'm going to say that's how you say it. And he makes it 1-1. This wasn't in the script, really. That's his 10th goal of the season. And they got in, got in round the side really. Just Hutchins didn't didn't block the cross well enough, and that near post cross, very very op I think in this uh, this FM, that near post cross, that low cross, and the uh, makes no mistake really. That's all we've seen really. The first first half an hour, nothing's really gone on particularly since they've happened those chances. But they are on the attack here. Oh, I thought they had a chance there. They're working it really nicely. They look like their system is is, is working very nicely against against ours. They are. Finding space right around the sides of our centre-backs and full-backs. Josh Hutchins just well there. 
He find, you know, Dan Ryder is on the breakaway. Can he get the ball across? He does. And there's Paul Phillips. I talked about him potentially being one that we let actually let go uh, at the end of the season, but I can't deny he always comes up with the goods. Dan Ryder puts a lovely ball in, and, and Phillips arriving. Frank Lampard-esque, you might say. Late run into the box, and he just slides it into the bottom corner, and we take a 2-1 lead. The time's ticking away towards that half-time. And it's looking... We're doing okay, I'd say. It's... Uh, I'm going to tell them, they're okay, but you can do a bit better. Like I say, I mean, you've seen by the previous results how how much how much domination we're having in in these games, and how, how uh, and how we're converting that dominance into goals. But they have a free kick here. Malice puts it in, and it's oh well, it's it's put in there by Aaron Hayden. A disappointing goal defensively, I feel. I, I won't see it again, but it looked like we just didn't compete in the air. What, two headers, was it? Thomas knocks it down. Davies knocks it on again. And they're just two yards out. It's poor, poor defending. And we are two back. They've equalised again. 2-2. Two, two. We need to make some changes here to try and freshen things up a little bit. I know Paul Phillips scored, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring on Ben Beachy. A bit of something different. I'm also going to bring on... Adam Kane is not as uh, I mean no one's had a particularly good game to be fair. George Jason's having a poor one. But yeah, I'm gonna he is not in the best of uh, morale at the moment because he wants to leave. He's not playing well, he's looking nervous, he's playing poorly. I'm gonna bring on Jimmy Gale. He was, he was progressing quite nicely. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna make three subs here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna when when they go on, I'm going to uh, do a team talk and tell them to passionately push forwards try and get them up the pitch and get them into their into their half we had, we, had, oh, we have a chance but it's clear do you see how they're, they're leaving three players up front consistently and it, it definitely causes a problem so i think this is a team as well as a system i don't like we would not like facing at a higher level i mean we are, time is ticking away this would be a, I'd rather, this would be a really disappointing game i know that they're that they are second in the league with us and they are near the top of the league but i honestly thought we would completely take this away from them to a point but we haven't and we've we to be honest, a draw is probably fair we've not created enough or anywhere near enough and they, they've been solid and they, they've just hit us on the break long direct balls up to their front three and it finishes phoenix sports 2 afc filed 2 i'm going to be pretty aggressive with the team there's no excuse not to win that game yeah so but there's still means of five points clear with three games in hand so there's no issues with us probably not going up or anything like that i think we will go up but it was just a disappointment really that we didn't uh didn't have enough to get past them given that like, the last game was 10-0 this is i just shouldn't put the camera on should i, I shouldn't I shouldn't I shouldn't hit start recording i shouldn't hmm. okay well i think the next game i don't think i mentioned actually we, we, we got drawn away at middlesbrough in the fa cup third round and uh, they are battling relegation in the in the Premier League. Still, look at the, obviously they're a decent side. They're they're you know a, a, a good Premier League team. Really, you know, they are. They've still got Ben Gibson, the hot prospect. Is something I looked at earlier. It looks fantastic. Luke Chettle. Imagine having him. Why couldn't Why couldn't I get him spawning at the club? He'd be he'd be superb. He's on loan at Portsmouth. Valued at three million. Portsmouth who are in the the Championship actually. They put they fought their way back. The key men, Kevin Stewart, you see, they got they got some good good players. George Friend is still there, 32 now, but still going strong. So let's see who their most valuable player is, just as an, uh, an example. Oh, Tom Atrey, 18 million. Whoa, he's not with that. <laughs> Santiago Arias is a very very good right back though. He would, uh, I mean, you compare him with Hutchins maybe. Just to make me sad. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the, the green bar is where Arias is better. Which is a, it's better finishing. Well, we, we, we know that. Finishing in composure. He's basically a striker. He's more aggressive. He's more determined. Decision making, fine. Acceleration of bands. I'm going to say it's even. I mean, a little bit of it. Yeah, so we, we, are, prob we are probably going to get 
smashed by Middlesbrough. But Jordan Ayew, Victor Fisher still there, Gasson Amir. So that's quite a vastly different from what they've got before. Darun still there, for sure. Ayala, Bamford still there. But they've still got. Well, uh, different Marcelo. That's, okay. They've still, got, they've still got some very, very good players, and they've brought in very good players like Adi Adias, who I'm actually signed for. Four million. Cracking bit of business. Bruno Zuccolini, I don't know who he's saying in real life. I don't think he is now. He's. He's a bit about everywhere, really. I think he's at Man City in real life, technically, on loan elsewhere. But yeah, we are we're in a good place. We're about to go into January, obviously, so we're going to get some unhappy players. And that, and that does tend to just sort of off balance us a little bit with results from time to time. So we need to be wary. But on the whole, I'm very pleased. We are going into the, uh, the middle of the game in good spirits. I hope we can at least put up a decent fight. And yeah, I mean, that'll probably wrap up this episode, guys. So if you have enjoyed it, uh, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Follow me on Twitter at DLCDave1. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.